compared with the, the vessel over there, the Xuelong Two is quite different. The ship over there is a cargo ship, but the uh, uh, Xuelong Two is different. The cargo ship, it knows its nose is different than uh, from Xuelong. The nose of Xuelong too is different from that one. It, it looks uh, beautiful, but also it's the secret uh, for its icebreaking functions. This is the last day for Xuelong to, to stay in the dock, and the last chance for us to know at first hand and come closer to this ship. Because after it uh, um, after it marched into the ocean, this part will be sinking into the oceans. Uh, therefore, uh, the, we we can no longer see how does it. Uh, finish and complete its ice-breaking functions. So part of uh, the assembling work was done in the dock. After it was finished, it will be dragged from the dock, uh, from the dock to the water. Using the power of flotation, with the tidal waves, the ocean, uh, the water, ocean water would also submerge into the dock, and then lifting the ship so that it can be floating in onto the water. And tonight, the uh, the dock will be slowly. Fit, filled with water. That's why we choose today at noon to do this live broadcast. Right now, I'm already in the dock. For us to know better about the ship and uh, the features of designing and construction, today we have uh, the chief uh, quality examiner, Mr. Du, with us. Say hi to our viewers. I'm the chief quality examiner of the ship in, and in charge of uh, the um, quality examination process and work from the beginning to the end. So the assessment of quality began at an early stage. So why do we begin the water filling process at night? It is mainly because of that we need to make full use of the tidal waves using the water pressure of the tidal wave to lift the ship. And then we can open up the uh, gate of the dock, and then it can uh, flow. It can travel to the oceans. So before water filling, we need to go. A, we need to conduct a security check. And uh, after all nights of uh, uh, water injection. And tomorrow, the ship will be ready to voyage. Can you tell us the design of uh, this part of the ship? This is uh, the special ice-breaking nose for an ice-breaking ice vessel like this. It needs to exert pressure on the ice caps so as to break the ice, here are here you can see that uh, there is uh, a blade which is not that sharp actually. The so-called uh, uh, icebreaker is not as sharp as the knife. It's only a small part of the vessel, 
But because of the width of the ship, all of these power will be concentrated to the snows. It can break ice up to 1.5 meters thick, uh, quite different than traditional icebreakers. The traditional icebreakers would uh, have to rely on um, the pressure that exert at the end of uh, the, uh, the tail of the ship. And, uh, but this ship can rely on this, uh, this ice, uh, ice blade. It is uh, quite a uh, wide ship. And uh, the whole uh, hull of the ship is quite thick. It's about uh, 100 uh, millimeters. For a normal uh, vessel, it will be about 20 millimeters. The, the uh, thick of uh, the, the um, blade is about uh, 100 millimeters thick, and the rest of the vessel is about uh, 38 millimeters thick. Beside the blade of uh, the vessel, there are also some other designs. This is um, the keel of the ship. It's also special design for the icebreaker because this vessel is not only an icebreaker but also a scientific research vessel. We need to carry out a lot of scientific experiment and we need to measure in the, um, the bubbles in the sea and the, the special pressure as well as some uh, fragmented ice. This design can reduce the impact of these uh, fragmented ice and bubbles to the ship. Mr. Du said that uh, without this design, um, the bubbles and fragmented ice will not in, uh, exert direct impact on the bottom of the ship, but it will be slided sideways and will facilitate the installation of uh, scientific research equipment. This is the side propulsion motors. It can give uh, um, sideway propulsion to the ship. It is uh, not uh, a normal design for vessels, uh, for ordinary vessels. They only need one side propulsion. Uh, propulsions. So Xue Lung Tu can break the ice up to 1.5 meters thick and uh, this is a PC3 level icebreaker. The old Xuelong can only break about 1.2 meters thick of ice. It's a major increase when it comes to the polar class because this is a polar class 3 vessel. This project, since it is starting to its finish, takes a very long time. The designing stage is quite uh, takes quite a lot of time. This is the first independently designed uh, vessel by China. 
Right now, we're walking towards the tail of the ship. Can you tell us some of the challenges in the process of designing as well as construction of the vessel? Because this is a polar iceberg, therefore, it needs very um, high intensity when it comes to the when it comes to the exterior of uh, the ship. The ship hull is much thicker than traditional than, than traditional uh, ship. You can see these uh, what we know as uh, ribs of uh, the ship. It also have much higher intensity than traditional ships. It is several times higher than that. Therefore, it raises much higher requirement for construction and building of the vessel. It is uh, known as uh, the ribs or as the keels of the ship. For this ship, you, you cannot uh, directly place the ship onto the dock. You have to have these uh, pillars to support the ship. What does it mean for the uh, ship to go into the waters? So there are different uh, milestones uh, to the construction of the ship. Uh, first is uh, the the starting of the building, and then to the complete of the ship, and then uh, will be the for the ship to enter water. When the ship was first brought here, it was divided. It was um, it was a combination of different parts. Therefore, the final assembling work is done here. It has more than 100 sections before the final uh, assembling. Before the final assembling, uh, was not the ship was not constructed here. With improvement of technologies, and uh, the speed of uh, assembling is much faster. This is a underwater gate. In the process of voyage, the vessel would need to absorb some of the water into the vessel. But when it was traveling into the polar regions, some of the fragmented ice might block um, this um, block these um, ventilations. Therefore, these are used as filters of the fragmented ice. These are some of the markers for the different uh, uh, cargoes uh, parts of the ship. Here, you can clearly see the thickness of uh, the of the panel of the steel panel. These steel panels have to be curved into this direction, which is also a lot of work because of the thickness of the panel. It used to be flat, and through a lot of work, only through a lot of work can it be um, curved this way. It is quite a beautiful ship. Um, 
I feel very proud when looking at it, but uh, I, there we do put a lot of effort and uh, have undergone a lot of difficulties and challenges. It is not a long ship, right? It's about 122.5 meters long and about 22.3 uh, meters width. It's a scientific research vessel with some uh, cargo transportation function. Therefore, it's not a quite a big ship per se, but it uh, has a very big weight uh, for a ship its size. It's a uh, Tone, its displacement is about uh, 14.3 thousand tons. It is also a requirement for an icebreaker because it needs the pressure to break the ice. That's why its self-weight needs to be heavy. It also needs very high um, high powerhouse um, motors. This is the propulsion motors. If we compare the propul the um, motors with the ship over there. You can see that uh, the propellers over here is much bigger than that over there. And uh, this uh, subs suspension design is also more flexible because uh, the propeller that you see over there can even rotate. So the propeller and uh, the uh, the rudder has been was combined into one. It can also break at both directions when the when the ship is uh, uh, marching forward or backward. It can break ice both ways. And here, the thickness of the panel is also about 38 millimeters. It's the first ship to realize ice breaking at both directions. This is uh, Another important uh, um, parts of the ship. It is you, made of stainless steels. The propeller was purchased from ABB, which was manufactured in Finland. Through bolts, it was uh, attached to the ship, and the red part would be the propulsion motors. It is a electronic, electronic propulsion waters, uh, motors, which would be high, more efficient than traditional propellers and uh, also make less noise. It is uh, also less, uh, it is also more energy efficient with uh, less sulfur content and the, so that it is a more environmentally friendly vessel. We also incorporate a filtering system to 
carry out uh, chemical um, re chemical reactions with the sulfur so as to degrade it. Uh, therefore, it will not pollute the environment and ocean environment. It will. Uh, it's, it looks like two chimneys above. The chimneys of this ship is also different than traditional uh, ship. It looks good, but also serve as a very practical function. We've finished uh, touring the bottom of the ship, and we know how the ship will break ice. And uh, when we go up, we can know more about uh, the designs to facilitate the scientific research. We can go this way. The ladder has been removed because tonight uh, the dock will be filled with water, and uh, we have to travel to that direction in order to go, bu go above. So what are some of the challenges into the, in the water filling process? The process is actually quite risky because it is the maiden voyage for this uh, car for this uh, vessel. We have to test whether this is whether all of these um, pipes, uh, all of uh, the seals has been closed. Uh, we have undergone several security check, but we are we will still stay alert during the whole water filling process. The process will be slow and gradual, and it will stop when the water is one meter steep. So it's not an very quick process. If it's too fast, it will cause a displacement of the vessel, which would constitute other risks. So this water filling process will be slow and gradual, so as for us to do more security check in the process. So how deep will the water be after the process is completed? It will be a normal draft of about six to six to six to eight meters. So the staff will be on board to check uh, uh, possible loopholes. And some other parts that might have uh, uh, to check whether all the doors and uh, gates were closed. In case of uh, an accident, uh, we will stop the water filling process immediately. We also have contingency plans. In case of emergency, uh, last day, uh, uh, yesterday, we also have a rehearsal of the contingency plans. The ship is has a quite a heavy self weight. That so that even after this water filling ship is completed, it will not float on its own. It will, but it will not flow quite high, just enough uh, floating power for it to leave the dock. This really is the last few hours uh, for Xuelong Chu to be staying in the dock. So how long does it take for it to enter the for the ship to enter the dock next time? Each year it will have to go through maintenance and uh, mending of the ship. So you have to wait another year.
From this angle, we can have a better picture of the ship. This is the anchor, anchors of the ship, anchors and chains of uh, the ship. When the ship began to go into the waters, uh, these um, anchors will be extra, will be extracted. What are the other test items? We will still have some uh, other last minute assembling work to onboard some of the equipment of the ship. We will also run some tests of electricity and gas. And after the launching of the ship, we need to go through some experiment. And then the ship will go on a maiden voyage, in which we will also do some uh, other test in the ocean. This white part here is uh, the is the cabin, also known as the upper structure of the ship, and that's also where the uh, cabin is located. This is uh, a lift, uh, a, a crane that can that can help lifting major equipment. This is also where the cargoes will go. Because as I said, this is also a cargo ship. The Xuelong one uh, ship is uh, mainly for cargo purposes, cargo transportation for purposes. But Xuelong two have uh, much stronger um, ca capacity for scientific research. It can carry uh, transport large scientific research equipment. Upon delivery, this ship will have a very good uh, uh, working conditions. There is also um, supporting facilities. Because uh, the travels to the polar areas will be quite long. Therefore, we have a very um, full-fledged design for living, for recreation, and it has uh, it is equipped with uh, independent bathrooms, also gyms, a sauna, swimming pool. In leisure time, our staff can enjoy a bit of uh, uh, recreational activities here. I even heard that uh, there is a, a karaoke room. During the voyage to the poles, uh, to the south or northern poles, sometimes it can be quite boring. So we have a lot of supporting facilities. The Xuelong Two also have a better signal receptions. The whole ship is equipped with Wi-Fi. You can send uh, emails and send messages or even videos uh, to your family and friends because it has a very good satellite uh, reception. 
Right now, we are at the scientific deck of the ship. Can you tell us uh, the special design of the ladders? For normal ladders or stairs, it, it's very easy to be frozen because there will be waves that will touch the deck and uh, it will uh, become frozen and will be very slippery, causing some accidents. We have a special design, however, on Xuelong 2. It has a self-heating system. When the temperature is too low, the system will be turned on automatically to prevent um, ice from forming. This ship will be officially delivered at, uh, on April or May of next year. So we need, still need to do a, a lot of uh, experiment and run some tests after its uh, launching. This ship also would need some uh, other interior furnishing, a uh, furnishing, and uh, the furnishing will be conducted at the same time with all of those uh, tests. You can see some cables on it. That is the that is the cables and lines for the self-heating system. It has to be after the uh, delivery of the ship, the cables will be exposed. And here you can see that still it has a layer of covers. This is the scientific research deck. As you can see, here are some uh, uh, cranes for the lifting of uh, the scientific equipment. At your right hand side is uh, a propulsion cranes of uh, 24 tones. It has several joints. It uh, can lift uh, equipment as heavy as 24 tons. It can extend out of the ship because you would need to lift a lot of uh, equipment from the outside ship to the inside. These flags are for ceremonial purposes. Upon launching of the ship, normally uh, we would hang these ships for celebration. These are signal flags. Inside the ship, there is another special design to make it more comfortable for scientists working inside. Which we'll tell you later. This is called the, the CTT integrated uh, crane. This is also for the uh, it's for the accumulation of uh, ocean water samples. Normally, this door will be closed. It's uh, a um, suspension gate. This is uh, also a state of the art. Moon, moon pole, what we know as moon pole. This uh, used to be only installed on engineering ship, 
But uh, the installation of this equipment on Xuelong 2 can improve the security level of the ship. It can be used to accumulate uh, uh, seawater. It serves as a well so as to absorb uh, sea water. The cap of the well will be sealed during voyage. And uh, will be only open upon requirement. So, on what occasions will the door be opened? When the ship is not uh, stable enough, uh, we can leave some water inside to, to maintain stability. But normally we will keep some of the water inside to ensure that the ship remain afloat and to protect the ship so as to gain better stability. This is what we know as the water tank. To reduce uh, the, um, the angle to which the ship is tilted. This is uh, what we call an anti-rolling tank or the oscillation uh, tank. The torque can be created to make sure that uh, the ship maintain at uh, a stable level. Also, some of the scientific equipment can only work at a stable environment. Therefore, we have to have a lot of uh, design to maintain safety. The water tank would only be put into use when the ship is uh, tilted to a large angle. Therefore, the allocation of the water can ensure that the ship can be uh, traveling at a quite a stable manner. This is an interior part of the ship. This interior stairs do not need self-heating system, right? Yes, on the inside, it's, there is not a big chance for water to go in. Therefore, we do not need a self-heating system. This is the control room for scientific research. From here, you can have a clear view of the scientific deck. And at the back, you can also see clearly um, the cranes. The CDD crane, when extending to the outside of the ship, you can control um, the cranes from this room. The scientist will be mainly working here to control all the equipment. It can carry about 90 people here, among which 41 are crew, and the other 49 will be scientific uh, uh, researchers. And each year, we the CCTV also send reporters to participate in this uh, scientific voyage. This is the main deck that will be the second floor of the ship. So altogether, the ship has seven floors. Uh, 
What are these、uh, tanks for? These are storeroom for the equipment of the ship. We can see here are some cabins for ACs for storage, and also some uh, uh, fire brigade. Right now, some of the part is still undergoing construction. During the construction of the vessel, most of the equipment are already put in.、Uh, most of them are already installed. This is a fireproof. Fireproof、uh, package. We would、uh, wrap this equipment to prevent dust and uh, um, and fire and sparkles during the construction process. This is the lifeboat, which is quite important. So we take full in, into full consideration. And uh, this uh, lifeboats lifeboats will be concealed into the ship to prevent、um, ice from forming on these lifeboats, and also to facilitate the boarding of the lifeboats. So this ship is equip equipped with、uh, two lifeboats. Which would have a, a bigger capacity than the capacity of、uh, the cargo of the、uh, vessel itself. It, the two lifeboats can accommodate more than 100 people on it, because we have to take into some、uh, consideration of some temporary、um, conventions. We have learned from the Titanic experience, of course. Doesn't look like a very big ship. So two ships combining would have a larger capacity. We do have a lot of designs,、uh, including the steel panels to prevent、uh, crushing, because the polar areas. Is quite a hostile environment. In case of an accident, it's、uh, very difficult to expect other ship to come to rescue you. Therefore, the ship has to be equipped with enough security equipment to, to ensure its own safety and to do、uh, self-rescue in case of an accident. We have to do everything to ensure the safe voyage of the ship. In case of an emergency, it might also include the helicopters. So this deck is mainly for the landing of the helicopters. On Xuelong Two, it is equipped with、uh, equipped with two helicopters. The old Xuelong vessel can accommodate、uh, one mid-size and、uh, one small-size helicopters, and for Xuelong Two, it can accommodate in,、uh, the landing of two mid-size helicopters. It so on each trip, the helicopter. Can carry about twenty passengers. So a lot of supplies and person and the person can be transported onto the ship or out of the ship through the helicopters. Our Xuelong vessel actually carried out a rescue mission and saved several people from another Russian vessel.
有新机。呃，还会有一些直升机的一些辅助的支撑设备。There will be also some supporting system for the helicopters. Uh, for example, the oil tank for the oil adding equipment and the maintenance equipment for the helicopters. So this level is uh, spe especially dedicated to the maintenance. And storage of、uh, the helicopters. During voyage, this is where the helicopters will be stored. It's quite spacious. This whole level is dedicated to the storage of the helicopters. The、uh, crew can also take a take a rest here. When the weather is good, you can also even have a、uh, gala here. <laughs> it needs some、uh, internal furnishing, of course, and the interior will be further、uh, decorated. The Cabins for the crew is yet to be finished. As we as we mentioned,、uh, it still needs a lot of interior furnishing before it can be officially delivered. We still see three to four floors above. So, how many people are in charge of the construction of the vessel? At the peak hour,、uh, there are about five hundred to four hundred to five hundred. People working simultaneously on this ship. We haven't divided the living quarters into cabins yet,、uh, but、uh, it, the design has been set. Each. Crew member will have its own, have his or her own cabin, equipped with an independent bathrooms and showers. And this way would be the passage. On board, we need to ensure that in each living quarters there will be two passages. This is where the crew and the scientists will be living in the future. And if we go further up, will be the、um, driving cabin. Of course, we're still waiting for the equipment to be installed. On the stairs, we can also see the self-heating system because、uh, we can see the cables. Because、uh, this stairs will be exposed to the exterior environment, therefore we have to have the self-heating system to prevent ice from forming. This will be the cap、um, for the ship. 
The installation work will not take long, but uh, we still need some uh, debugging and modulation processes. All of the information and uh, for the voyage of the ship will be installed here. I don't know much about uh, the smart technologies on this ship because smart driving for vessels is uh, also a very new concept and uh, we are building all the uh, and learning simultaneously. We will now go to the uppermost uh, uh, uppermost level to see the uh, radars of the ship and we'll have a bird view of the ship. It is quite magnificent. The driving cabin is different than traditional ship. Normally, uh, they have windows only at four directions. But uh, on this ship, we will have uh, a drive, another driving deck at the tail of the ship. It has a lot of other functions. It has a DP2 function. When there is uh, a function, a malfun malfunction at this cabin, you can drive and steer the ship at the other control deck. Another situation is that when a helicopter is landing, it can be served as a air control, air traffic control center or a tower of the ship. Now let's go to the top of the ship. That it is the uppermost level. These are the two chimneys that we mentioned before. The chimneys here are asymmetric. It is not a very big ship, therefore these two ventilators will have to go up this way and uh, the curving is mainly aimed at the installation of SCR system which is unconventional on vessels. It is to prevent the tail gas from eroding the ship because uh, the tail gas will be uh, heated and will contain some carbon. If it, it's not uh, uh, emitted uh, to the outside, it might uh, cloud the vision of the helicopters. So what are the radars here for? It is for the installation of the radars. Can be also installed with uh, satellite uh, tenants and for some other equipment for probe and uh, exploration. During today's live broadcast, we have come from the bottom of the vessel to the top of the vessel. And uh, this deck is also where the compass is installed. It's the first polar scientific research vessel that is independently designed and constructed by China. This is the top of uh, the storage tank for the helicopters. And you can see there are several uh, levels to the ship. Today we have uh, a very full picture 
of uh, the Xuelong Tu. It's a vessel combining icebreaking function, cargo function, and scientific research function. Today, it's my honor to have Mr. Du with us. And uh, this cargo will be launched soon. What do you feel right now? It's like seeing uh, my, my own child going to school on the first day. But uh, this is only a, the beginning of an end. It's the end of the beginning. Um, hopefully, in the future, we can complete the build the construction process and provide a qualified icebreaker for China. I asked Mr. Du yesterday when the ship entered into the polar polar area. Would there be simulation processes? Would there be some test trials, test voyages? But for a polar uh, scientific research ship, it's difficult for us to do some uh, uh, previous uh, testing to simulate the polar environment. But we have factored in all of these uh, uh, Situation and element into consideration, for example, the ice load and temperature of the ship. So if all of the work have been done and finished, we are fully confident that uh, this ship will be able to fulfill its mission. Will you be following the ship? Before the delivery, even upon delivery, we will also do a lot of follow-up work to check up the quality of the ship. So thank you so much for joining us into this trip onto Xuelong Tu. Tomorrow, the Xuelong Tu will be launched into waters. We hope it, that all goes well. Thank you for watching. I'm Wang Shiyu with CCTV, broadcasting you from Shanghai.